film Mia? Yeah. You ready? Look at her little legs. You ready? So this is gonna be an honest video. <laughs> If anybody's thinking about starting van life, we're gonna give you the rundown, why we stopped, what you should avoid on van life, the hardships of van life, the stuff that you don't see on Instagram, that people just don't tell you about. And I mean, I wish we would've saw a video like this before we started because it kind of would've gave us a better idea of what to expect on the road mm -hmm. and what you're gonna deal with. Yeah. But first, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I didn't say that. I kind of took over that intro. Yeah. Welcome back, you guys. I know we've been kind of MIA for a little while, but we have had a lot of big life changes recently. If you guys didn't already know, we quit van life. <laughs> um, we didn't quit. I mean, we, we ended, ended our early. trip early. So our goal of van life, we weren't planning to live full time for years in a van. We just wanted to do like two months, just, just take a break and just decompress because we had some money saved up. So yeah. we are like, why not? We kind of just wanted to go travel and celebrate our freedom. Yeah, it was going to be like a little two month vacation for us. We were just going to travel the country. We had a whole roadmap planned out. And obviously neither of us have done this before. So we were like totally blind. We didn't know what we were doing going into it. We were just winging it. We knew going into it that the weather was going to get bad soon because we started in late September, right? So we kind of knew that it, the weather might get bad Bad, especially in the north but we were like we're gonna do it anyway and we only planned to do it for about two months so when we were deciding if we were gonna um, end the trip early we were thinking like okay should we sell the van or should we rent it out as like an Airbnb but um, I think when it came down to it when we at the, were at the end that was only our Monterey by the way is when we decided to end the trip anyways we were like okay I think the best decision to do is just to sell the van because when you Airbnb it out or you know rent it out it can get complicated with like insurance if somebody wrecks it the cleaning process of it um and i think at that point we were just like done with the van we were like get it out of here we don't even want to look at it anymore you know so i'm just saying like after doing that for a month and a half being locked up in a van sleeping in parking lots literally living in it i mean maintenance issues everything yeah it's like just going back in the van and smelling the van again and you get back in there and it almost gives you like PTSD almost. You're like, oh my gosh. And we don't want to be too dramatic because yeah. like we had a really great time on the van trip but there was a lot of things that happened um, that ultimately led us to ending the trip early. So we can get into more of that. Yeah. This is Mia. She's not our dog, we'll explain. I wanted to kind of touch on like, was it worth it, pros and cons, what would we do differently in the future? So what would you say, babe, was it worth it? I would say the trip was 80% good, 20% bad. But tw those 20% of just complete stress, complete aggravation, yeah. it had a huge effect on us. And I think after about three weeks of traveling and seeing so much stuff, you kind of just get numbed to everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we would have like separated the trip, like maybe go somewhere for a week and then take a break for a week and then go somewhere for a week, the, the sites that we saw would have been more special to us. But when you go, go, go to all these amazing sites, it kind of feels like, like you said, like numb to it. Yeah. I mean, they were amazing regardless. Like all the places we went were just like breathtaking and super cool. Not saying they weren't, but it would have been more special if we would have planned it out better, I guess. But I would say it's worth it if you do it the right way. You well, have to I think, plan it. I think one thing about us, we're homebodies. Yeah. Like we enjoy being at home. We enjoy our privacy doing our thing, but yeah. we literally said, hey, we're gonna go out in the world to live in this van for months at a time. Yeah. And there's no home. Your home's your van. And I think you it's know. not just like if you're in a van with somebody for a whole month with no break, like no matter who you're with, you're not gonna get along at some point or it's gonna be very difficult on your relationship with that person. Like if I was doing this with my sister alone, like or my mom or my best friend or whatever, it would be the same exact way as it is with Jake because I don't know, you just you're just around each other 24-7, you don't get any alone time and you just get on each other's nerves easier and that was, was definitely a big I was con. perfect the whole trip. Yeah. So all the young men out there that are married, you go out there with your wife, you're gonna see sides of your wife that you've never seen before. So just prepare <laughs> yourself and you just gotta mentally prepare for that. I saw sides of you too. I was perfect. Or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, what were some of the pros though? Um, we, we listed some cons. I would say the pros are, you're kind of knocking out all the sightseeing you wanna see in 
a short amount of time. And that's if you're on the road a lot, because we drove over 12,000 miles yeah. in total in a month and a half. Yeah. So we got to see a lot of cool stuff. Also, you're not paying for hotel. You're only paying for gas and food, really. Yeah. So um, there, I'll say the benefits are it's cheaper because you're just driving. You're not really flying anywhere, not paying for hotels. Yeah. But this is a big pro tip for van life. Well, I would say every week or every week and a half, two weeks, get a hotel room for like a night or two. Yeah, that was a big one, especially when we were like on the edge with each other. We were just like, we need to sleep in a real bed, take a hot shower and just relax, do some editing or whatever. So that was super helpful, but it does get pricey. So definitely budget for that. So would you do it again, you think? Would I do van life again? Yeah. Absolutely not. Me neither. I would not do it again. There was no way. If I were to do anything like that again, I would have a pickup truck and a fifth wheel behind me. Big old camper. Yeah. I I like that idea better too because you can ditch the camper and just ride in the truck wherever you want to go and it's not so, I don't know, confined. And you can get to a lot better places. Like, like for example, when we went to Yosemite, we could have parked our camper somewhere and then took the truck. Um, further into the park and yeah. we wouldn't have had the risk of like tipping it as much as we would have with the van So but no wouldn't do van life again. I mean, but everybody's different I know there's a lot of couples who do it with kids and dogs I personally don't know how they do that because it's very impressive to me But I think it was super fun while it lasted. We made a lot of good memories that were Good and then we made some that were bad, but those bad <laughs> memories I think are stuff that we can laugh about now. Oh, yeah Um oh, yeah. And I have a couple of funny stories if we have time at the end, maybe we'll share a couple of those. If you want a crash course on your early marriage, do van life. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll tell the little story of uh, why we quit when we quit. So when we quit van life, we were in Monterey. That was the last vlog that I uploaded. And we truly were planning on continuing the trip. Um, there was a point there where Jake and I were like not getting along, <laughs> to be honest. And we were just like done with van life. We were like, I don't wanna be near each other. We don't wanna be near each other. We wanna go home and just get out of this van basically. <laughs> but we slept on it, we got a hotel uh, and things were better the next day. And we were like, okay, no, I think we really should push through and continue with van life. So that was the plan. We were gonna go further up north to San Francisco, up the coast, like to the Redwoods and Oregon and Seattle and eventually Montana and Yellowstone and all that. So that was the plan and we decided to continue. And then the next day, as we decided to continue, we look at the weather and there is a huge bomb cyclone coming. And I guess I'm not familiar with that because I'm from the Midwest, but when a huge storm hits like that on the coast, it can cause mudslides that are like deadly. So they can wipe out homes and cars and stuff like that and we didn't feel safe doing that going up the coast with that storm hitting and um california was pretty expensive it was really expensive we weren't working on the trip we were going off of the money that we had saved up so we decided that it wasn't a smart thing to stay in california um because prices are a lot higher there and we just didn't have the money to spend if we decided to like wait a week or so or more to, for the storm to pass so we were like okay maybe this is just a sign that we're not supposed to go up north so we went we were like okay let's just go to yellowstone we'll go to yellowstone and then continue the trip east and then so we headed to yellowstone and we were a couple hours in on the way and we looked at the weather and it was snowing and there was a huge snowstorm it's like so, an ice storm yeah yeah so we were like all right guess we're not going to yellowstone <laughs> and at that point we were so burnt out and we were like do can we even afford to keep going we have the patience to keep going so we together decided that it was time to end the trip and just take it for what we had experienced. And we both decided it was enough for us. We were like, we've experienced a lot, we've seen a lot. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what we're doing now and what the plan was for us after van life. Before we started van life, we were really contemplating like what we're gonna do after we get out of the military and um, after van life even. Well, before we started van life, I was actually looking for jobs because I was an airplane mechanic. So I was looking at airplane mechanic jobs and I was like, man, do I really want to work on airplanes in Florida for the rest of my life? Not really. Mm -hmm. So my plan was to get out, buy a house and work a civilian job, work on airplanes. And I really, I just didn't have peace about it at all. I'm like, man, I really don't think that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I called my parents up and talked to them and I'm like, hey, do you guys mind if we come live at your house while we start school up or figure our lives out a little bit? And they live here in Houston, Texas. And they're like, yeah, sure, come on down. So yeah, um, we've been, I mean, we started van life in late September. 
and then we did that till November and we've been living here since November. So um, going forward though, it sounds like we're gonna be moving to Northern Texas. And it's funny because we're moving to the same area, same town where Hannah and I actually met yeah. in the Air Force. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's where we went to tech technical school out tech there school. for our um, jobs in the Air Force. And that's how we met in that town. And we're yeah. moving back to that same town, so. Should be interesting. Yeah. Should be interesting. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. so. I, was, I think you guys are gonna see a lot of cool things on the channel because we're looking at uh, buying houses, buying land, yeah. Raising chickens, doing lot, all that stuff. We have a lot of um, upcoming things, goals in the next year that we're excited about and I'm excited to share it with you guys here on my channel. There will be more travel vlogs coming, not about van life, but we that is something that we love to do. So we definitely want to keep traveling and give you guys those travel vlogs. But I have a lot of other content I want to start doing here on my channel, so I'm super excited for that. And I hope you guys stick around for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit of different content but yeah. i'm still super excited about it and yeah we are looking about getting some land and maybe some chickens i, I would say basically your channel is like it's just gonna be our life basically because hannah yeah. and i we both have the same goals we both want land we both want to invest in real estate we both want to i know hannah really wants to have her own wedding venue one day yeah we just like building stuff. I have so many so. ideas and things like that that I want to do in the future, um, but I want to document it all here on my channel. Super sad that van life's over, but not really. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, stay tuned for more content. The the main point of this video, I'll kind of give you guys an update, but pros of the van life, cons of the van life. It's not all butterflies and rainbows like you see on Instagram. I would say um, if you invest in a really expensive van, van life would be easier. Yeah. Like a really expensive one, like the ones you see with showers built inside of them and all that. Definitely a lot easier because there was times, here's another con, there was times we would go without a shower for like five days. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, that was bad. We were going to share a couple of funny stories that happened on the van trip uh, that might go along with pros and cons. I don't know. You guys can decide. But, Are you going to tell them the toilet story? Yeah. <laughs> but one night, <laughs> We were, uh, we were driving all day long. This is when we decided to end van life and we were coming back home. So I guess, I didn't know this at the time, but Arizona is like elevated. I didn't know that. That's probably a stupid thing for me to say. But as we were coming from California to Arizona, we were going up through elevation. And when you go through elevation, the way our toilet was made is there's like some sort of like pressure system. And there's like a cap at the top that you're supposed to unscrew to help with that pressure. But basically how the toilet worked is you would just pull the lever and it would dump the toilet into a container below the toilet, if that makes sense. Anyways, when I, I'm trying to figure out how to tell the so story. So we were, we were. No, 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 I got it, I got no, it. No, I got it. We were, I got it. Nah, no, nah. I got it. So we were in Monterey, almost at sea level, and we were, what? We weren't driving through mountains in Monterey. No, we had, we were in, Mo okay. We were in Monterey, we're at sea level, so zero feet. And then we drove all the way through Arizona to Flagstaff, and then we hit the Grand yeah. Canyon. So yeah. our elevation went up a few thousand feet, so that means the pressure inside the toilet is gonna be greater than the air pressure outside the toilet. Right. Because the air pressure inside the toilet is still at sea level. Yeah. And I unscrewed the vent, but apparently the vent was blocked or something. So it's three o'clock in the morning. We had been driving for probably like 10, 12 hours. Um, and we were calling it a night at a Walmart parking lot. I of course have to use the restroom. So I go, cause there's no toilet around other than mine. And then I go to pull the lever and <laughs> literally the whole, everything inside the toilet explodes <laughs> onto my face, all <laughs> over my arms, my body, everything. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm half awake, I'm exhausted. And that is the last thing I want to deal with. And now I have pee all over me. It was a bad time. So it was, she started screaming and she's like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what's wrong back there? She wouldn't say it. I look back there and there's pee all over. Okay. It was, and then it was pretty funny. all I had, all I could do was just take Clorox wipes and wipe myself up. And then I had to go to sleep because we couldn't shower. We didn't have a shower. It's three o'clock in the morning. So I just wiped myself off with Clorox wipes and went to sleep. And you had to sleep next to me. Uh, yeah, that sucks. slept right next to her. Not to mention after the toilet exploded, it got all over the floor. So I'm sitting there wiping it up with paper towels. We don't have a trash can, so we literally just have to like put the paper towels in the trash and wait till the next morning. 
It was a disaster. It's and that thing. happened twice. That happened twice. And then the second time you did it, I told you I'm like slowly slide it open and you slowly slid it open and it's still like swoosh. Yeah. I don't twice. know. And after that, I literally was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> but we were already on our way home. So that was just like the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. We were at that point we were we were really tired of each other. I just say that, and that was like your tipping point. Yeah. You were like, okay. Well, a couple other we have a couple other stories I could tell. Like one time we decided to do laundry in the hotel. Yeah. And you have to pay to do that, right? So we threw our we washed our sheets and our blankets and everything like that. We threw them in the washer and we threw them in the dryer, and we go back to see if it's dry, and some man had put his clothes in the dryer with ours and it caused our drying process to go slower and we had to check out and get on the road. You got somebody's dirty clothes in with all your clothes. It was just so frustrating. Yeah. So we like took his clothes out and then our comforter was like soaking wet so we just had to like take it with us on the van trip. Then we were going to sleep that night and our comforter still wasn't dry. So then we had to go to Walmart and buy like a $50 comforter <laughs> just so we could get by till we went home. Uh, it just seemed like when we stopped the van trip everything just went south. Yeah, there were so many things working against us. We were yeah. just like, what is going on? I feel like this whole video is just ripping on van life. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're just being well, brutal. We have to honest. be honest. We have to be honest with yeah. them and like tell them the reality. What I them. went through, what we went through, I don't want anybody to go through. There was really, I mean. Thankfully, on the bright side, we were safe the whole time. Our yeah. van never broke down. We didn't have any issues with that. We It was very reliable. So that was the, the good thing about the trip. We yeah. made it through all the places and we were safe so but yeah i am definitely not cut out for the van life i know a lot of people out there are but i'm personally not what about you i'm not <laughs> no i like coming home taking a shower get yeah. on an airplane going to visit a national park stay for a few days and come home yeah you know anyways i don't want to keep rambling i feel like we've yeah i think i think we're rambling i think you guys get the point yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video about pros and cons of van life and <laughs> what we learned from our experience if you guys learned something from us and um, if you're choosing to do this in the future sometime um, definitely just prepare yourself for the worst <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's anything, I mean, we didn't touch base on you guys are wanting to know, yeah, let us know in the comments. Up. We'd be more than happy to help you guys. I mean, yeah. if you guys came to this video looking for a van life uh, tutorial or help on your your van life, um, let us know in the comments below. Hit that like button if we helped you. And, I mean, we might make another video answering more questions. So if you guys want to know more, we can definitely make a part two of this video so we can go in more detail. Yeah, we have lots to say and lots, to, lots of advice to give. Um, we just don't want to make this video super long but that is an update about where we are now and what our future kind of holds the near future anyway all right guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye